the not very notable demographic of Donald Trump supporters who are also big Green Day fans, well, they're embarking down the boulevard of broken <laughs> dreams right now because their favorite rock band made a subtle change to the lyrics of their hit song, American Idiot, to strike out against former President Donald Trump and his, quote, MAGA agenda. Watch. Conservatives mostly reacted with amusement to Green Day's antics. Right-wing comedy site Not The Bee wrote, Green Day tried to prove they're still cool by changing their lyrics to slam the MAGA agenda on TV last night, to which Elon Musk responded, Green Day goes from raging against the machine to milk toastedly raging for it. I am not mad. I am not mad. Uh, but some took it a bit more seriously. Texas Congressman Dan Crenshaw posted on Instagram, I just hate it when big artists have the chance to bring Americans together and instead divide them. Why? You're a singer. I don't really care about your policy opinions unless it has to do with music industry regulations. Just make people happy with your music instead of spouting off. I like this version of stick to sports. Stick to music <laughs> industry regulations. Of course, the problem, Robbie, is one. that as many people on the internet have pointed out, American uh, uh, Green Day has always been a political band. Yeah, the song was initially a anti-Bush protest song. Um, they were, well, they've been big for a long time, but American Idiot brought them uh, renewed attention and fame during the Bush years. Um, I was a big fan of this album and generally the music from this time period. I am a Green Day fan, to uh, to admit that fully. It's you. Uh, you're the, you're the uh, but I, right, I, but I didn't, uh, well, and I was not particular, or I, I, this was, this is going to my high school years. Um, I came to be not a particular fan of Bush foreign policy, so I, I, I came to, I think I liked the music before I I was influenced in that direction politically. So maybe it's all them. Maybe they converted me to uh, opposition <laughs> to uh, what was then the Bush agenda. Yeah. I mean, it is, uh, you know, one can comment on how maybe they see those as the same thing, even though our conservatives would think it's night and day between Trump and Bush. Um, the there's no love for Bush among conservatives, the among the actual, is, the MAGA agenda. The, this the is the funny thing. The criticism is that they're making it political. The right. criticism is, why are you yeah, politicizing that, the song when the original lyric of the song is, I'm not a part of a redneck agenda. Right. I mean, I, I don't, that's not my favorite use of phrase or whatever, but well, the, the line entire before that song, is, maybe that, maybe I'm the F yeah, America. Uh, yes. Which Saying is, that, I, like, maybe I'm, he uses the, right. a pejorative for gay people. He's reclaiming to, it. Yes. Yeah. It, you know, and, and the song, the song is explicitly, I'm sorry, it talks about biased media. The whole song, yeah. every lyric is a political critique. Yeah. So the clear consternation is not about it being politicized, but be, but people being reminded that it's politicized in a way that's against your political agenda. And that these people aren't being honest about it is is kind of funny. It, it's it's giving what is the meme um, the corn cob meme I am not owned, I am not owned. As I slowly shrink and turn into a corn cob. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, obviously it it, it you look pretty foolish being bent out of shape about this because it's an explicitly political band. That album is explicitly political. I think the next song on the album is Jesus of Suburbia, which is like an eight-minute rant about a lot of things, many of them political. Um, I think Boulevard of Broken Dreams is probably my favorite song from that album. You're I also a real like Green Holiday. Day I was a huge fan of this album. That's I so had funny. this album. Um, well, I love you know alt rock of the of the '90s and early aughts, which is when this yeah, dates from. I, I actually I, I liked their CD you. Warning even before that was a. I grew up listening to that. My parents would play that CD all the time. <laughs> the things I'm learning about you today, Robbie. <laughs> so, so someone tweeted out that there was a Rock Against Bush compilation album that was put out. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there were multiple volumes, and on volume two, Green Day's favorite son was the first song on that album. I don't know if you're familiar with that one and the political nature of it, but apparently it was political enough to be included on a Rock Against mm. Bush compilation album as a picture of George Bush covering his ears as an amplifier blasts yeah. uh, progressive rock, I don't know, yeah. behind him. I mean, I guess it is funny to me, though, but if there's anybody who still has like a lot of affection for George W. Bush, they're not people who like Trump and the MAGA agenda, right? Lynn, is Lynn Cheney now rocking out to, to, to Green Day yeah, because but, it's, it's but attacking Robbie, the that's, MAGA that's agenda? That's a little bit of sophistry. People are allowed to avoid their, uh, to evolve their politics and whatnot, but the mm -hmm. entire Republican Party that was sitting around and voting in 2020, uh, 2004 overwhelmingly for George Bush are largely the same, I mean, age changes and right. stuff like that and deaths and people being born and getting old enough to vote. 
are largely the exact same people who voted for, are going to vote for the Republican nominee, Donald Trump, in all likelihood. Well, sure, but there's been a ma there has been a bit of a not enough, in my view, at least a rhetorical evolution to some degree on foreign policy stuff, which was sure. a major thrust of the of the Bush era criticism and that the the Iraq War fever pitch um, kind of. Iraq war fever breaking around that time, if I recall. Yeah. So one one Twitter user pointed out, as as we've been doing, saying right wingers finding out that Green Day hates them is like when they found out that Rage Against the Machine hates them, which was like when they found out that Neil Neil Young and Bruce Springsteen hate them, which is like when they found out that their wives and kids hate them. I'm not. That's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty getting into mean. a different a different uh, territory. But people have pointed out a lot of those folks, Adele. Uh, uh, asked that Donald Trump not uh, play Rolling in the Deep or Skyfall at his rallies. Aerosmith, uh, the Beatles, Springsteen, Clearance, Clearwater Revival, a, a ton and ton of musical groups have asked that uh, Donald Trump or other conservatives. This is why it's all Kid Rock at everything. You can uh, you're, you're limited to Kid Rock, um, like Mumford and Sons or something. Um, I think one of them was a little Jordan Peterson curious. Oh really? Uh, it's a it's a it's a very short list. Very sad. Yeah. And, and remember, mo more recently, and in the context of this ongoing presidential cycle, Vivek Ramaswamy was asked by Eminem's camp to no longer uh, rap. Was it Lose Yourself the way that he had done it? But you least can't one. stop that man from <laughs> rapping. You can try, but you will fail. Well, it is interesting. I mean, some, some conservatives have basically said, and I think this was kind of the tone of um, Dan Crenshaw's remarks, too, um, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you making it political? But of course, there does seem to be a double standard for someone like Kid Rock, who openly has a certain kind of politics, mm -hmm. who's joining in the campaign against Bud Light, which you could also say, oh, beer should be bringing us together. Why are you polarizing I mean, people over I beer? Do th I think there's a difference between uh, conservatives get annoyed when they feel like politics is injected into something that doesn't need to have political undertones at all. And then, of course, but then they cheer when politics are injected and it happens to be their politics. Right. But they would say, well, this is this is turnabout is fair play, and we're, we're never this never happens. So when it happens, we can celebrate it. But the more thoughtful idea is that does everything have to become political? Can some things like sports or whatever remain unpolitical? But Green Day was inherently political from the get go, so it's it, it makes no sense to be well, so out of shape. Music, about that. so much American music in particular, which has been overwhelmingly influenced by the creative outputs of black Americans who are responding directly to their political conditions. We're talking about the American musical art forms like jazz, mm -hmm. blues, rock and roll. The idea that those kinds of songs would be apolitical. I mean, the original um, Big Mama Thornton version of Hound Dog is an, an inherently political song about someone's relationship with men, gender politics, all of those kinds of things, poverty. So, I mean, it, it does also kind of miss the point of why people create art in the first place to, de to demand it be, I don't know, like, oops, I did it again and nothing else. No shade to Britney. That's a bop. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And then if, if the lyrics of oops, I did it again got changed to oops, I maggot again, as yeah, we're about that, to in 2024 or something. But that isn't even I don't know. what it is. America, the American idiot. Right. The I know. I, know, I'm saying, like, I, know I'm, I agree. But if it was, if it was inherently sure. unpolitical and it was transformed yeah. for a gimmick sure. for, for clapping seals sure. in the mainstream media to applaud over. I just, I, in fact, I saw a um, uh, countdown guy, uh, Olbermann, huge fan of ours, <laughs> as I think called on the hill to fire us both for our uh, Ukrainian commentary. Yeah. Keith Olbermann, I was watching his uh, video. I, God, I find him so darkly funny. It's just entertaining <laughs> to hear the sound of his voice. But he was like, and and the MAGA bubble being pierced by Green Day. How strange, <laughs> but it happened. Like, you don't know who Green Day is either then, man. Like, that is not surprising. And it's just like being cheered. Like, th this is... You know, this is beginning of the end. He goes, he's off the ballot. Green Day's coming for him. Your your wildest fantasies are being fulfilled. Yeah, and it's, it's worth remembering that back in the early aughts, these kind of criticisms weren't without risk. I think one of the few genuine cancellations that really ever happened was the Dixie Chicks calling out. Um, she passed away over the holidays. Oh, did she really? I didn't know that. Pretty sure. Yes. Which which. Dixie Chick. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, they, don't, they, they go by the chicks now, my Laura apologies. Lynch. Yeah, she, uh, she was in a car crash uh, oh, no. December 26th. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I mean, they showed a lot of bravery for criticizing a George Bush at a time post 9-11 when there was a lot of consensus, in, even among liberals, in backing him uh, in his foreign intervention that was ostensibly in response to 9-11. And um, so I, I credit all of these 
people who do choose to be political when they don't have to, not in a revisionist way to score points, mm -hmm. you know, years later, but really who in the moment when it was hard chose to put aside potential financial gain for themselves and to create a broader audience and to pick a side. Um, so kudos to Green Day for doing that then. Um, rest in peace uh, and thoughts to the, Dixie, the chicks and their, and their families. Mm. And uh, stick around. We'll have more rising for you right after this.